All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are, everyone. Uh, Greg Milner here at Worldwide Salon Marketing uh, for this special webinar with this very special guest. Um, the lockdowns will end. In fact, some places are ending those lockdowns very, very shortly. It depends on where you are in the world and businesses will be able to reopen. But the coronavirus will be with us for a long, long time. And that puts a whole bunch of hurdles to get through uh, for all business owners in making sure that everybody is up to speed with coronavirus health and hygiene practices. And uh, it's so important uh, that we've brought one of our long-standing members and uh, somebody I've known for 15 years, one of the most awarded salon and spa owners in Australia and possibly the world, uh, Karen Briffus Hughes from Le Beau uh, Clinic and Spa here in Perth, uh, as it happens, joins me uh, for this special call. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Greg. How are you? I'm very well, Karen. You run a very, very tight ship. Um, you don't win awards hand over fist for years and years and years without being a, 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 a Nazi for detail. How important is this uh, to get ready for when business opens? Well, I think like we're just the industry. I mean, I've been in the beauty industry for 25 years and it has changed as we've gone along and most of the ladies would agree with me. Um, but we're used to putting out there as far as our marketing material goes and everything that we, our, our message to our clients are all about our results and are about our, how we can make them feel um, as far as beautiful and all those kinds of things and relaxed. But our, the way we present now is going to be very different and it's really important that we are putting into place and going above and beyond um, the expectations of our clients within our business, with our hygiene processes and being very COVID-19 Surround. All our procedures need to be honed in on that. Um, I think some of these things we've always done um, and some of the things have to be changed and altered. And if we're not seen to be doing it properly and over and above, our clients won't trust us. Our teams won't trust us. They won't feel safe. And if they don't feel safe, you'll have problems with your team. You'll have problems with getting your clients back. So I think it's imperative that we look at this now, we implement this now, um, while our businesses are still closed, that we have everything in place. So when that day comes for that door to open, that everything is ready to run like clockwork. Not trying to work it out on the day that we open, not trying to teach our team what they should be doing on our day open, in the morning meeting, oh, by the way, girls, make sure you don't keep your clients together. And by the way, those messages are gonna be very loose. And when your girls do something wrong, you can't blame them because the only person you'll have to blame is ourselves because we are a team. So I think if you want your business to survive this, you need to have good, strong policies in place that have been met and your team have been trained on um, and your clients have been marketed about them, that you share what you're doing with your clients beforehand. I think uh, what, what this comes down to is that it's going to be important for the clients to know that they are safe and well protected, isn't it? Absolutely, 100%. So even if you have a look at my Facebook page, you'll see that last Friday, all my team went in and cleaned the salon from head to toe. Now that morning, I put a big disinfectant um, post up saying that my team were in their spring cleaning and disinfecting from end to end today. And that was our marketing material for that day with our clients. Um, so that people know that we spent, it was over 30 hours worth of cleaning that happened in that salon um, on, on um, was it Friday? So they know, and I can't tell you how many likes, it was like ridiculous, the amount of feedback we got from it and the likes that we got really indicated to me what I was doing was extraordinarily important right now. And having these systems in place was really important. Now, when you talk about policies and procedures uh, related to COVID-19 reopening, yep. that you're talking about um, a, a written down, uh, rigidly enforced document, aren't you? Yeah. So everything has to be stipulated. 
Um, I've even added a declaration in there from my team um, that they have to sign to make sure that they understand that they have ownership of what is required because we need to take this seriously. If we are not doing something right, someone will job you in and it might not be your fault. It might be your teammates. And those doors are closed, ladies, so we cannot see what they're doing. So we need to throw that ownership onto them and make them responsible for what is happening um, in our staff. And so that they know that they have to uphold these rules that you've put in place. And it's in place for the benefit of themselves, the benefit of the client and the benefit of the community. And we need to take that really seriously. We've been put in a position of real importance. And if God forbid we had some breakout in our own businesses, it won't be good. So it's really important for your business to be very, very straight. Um, and everything's written down right from reception policies to treatment room policies to common area policies to staff room policies to staff uniforms, how they present, what they are allowed to bring to work, all that. So you've produced this policies and procedures manual in a long, you know, detailed document. What kind of things does it cover? So it covers, well, to start with, we've got all the, um, we've produced some posters. You can use them as posters. Um, you can use them as stickers. Um, you can use them um, through your cell. And so there's ones for different areas to constantly remind everybody that you are um, upholding these um, systems and you're ex definitely sharing that with your clients and your team so that they all know what is expected. Um, then it's got lots of bits, other pieces like even the shopping list. Okay, so what do I need? So before you bring your team in, you need to have this, and if they're going to prepare the rooms, you need to have had one prepared for them beforehand so that they understand what you want. You have to have all the materials that they need on site. You can't expect them not to work productively if you don't have everything that, the, that your team needs. So there's that. Um, so there's a reopen checklist to make sure right from what you should be doing with your marketing um, and making sure your rooms are ready. What should be done at the beginning of the day? What should be done at the end of the day? What your therapist should be doing at the beginning, at the end, during treatment. Um, so you've got paperwork for clients, paperwork for your staff for every day. What's the procedure when the client calls? What's the procedure when the client comes in? What's the procedure when the client leaves? The more and more you get into it, the more and more mammoth you start to realise this document actually starts to become. So, I mean, I I published with you years ago, um, which has been updated many times, the policy and procedure manual for the salon. Um, so this is different to that in that with that, you can kind of put your own tweak on it, put your own personality into it. With this, this is no, not a personality thing. These are rules and regulations that need to be placed into your business. Um, and then like some of the things are going to be different in some areas. So you need to still do your background and make sure that your territory, your, your state, your country, your region, you have actually still got to make sure, even though you have the, like you, when your document is done, you need to do the research to make sure that it covers all those areas. Now you're making this, this uh, document uh, uh, downloadable for, folks on this uh, webinar uh, a little later. Um, it even covers um, things like you, you must have a, um, a certificate uh, from uh, the uh, health authorities, don't you, for your staff? You don't have to, but what we're trying to do here is we did this before we were closed down. So as soon as um, we realised that we really needed to step it up, we were the first to start doing the thermometer where we were taking clients' temperatures, for an example. All my team were um, asked to go and down, do the um, forms, otherwise they weren't allowed to work. So you have to do, you have to go and do, I think for me, to keep your clients confident in you and feel safe, that they know that your team understand um, the ins and outs of the infection control. So it's a course that you do online. You have to do the course and then you sit an exam um, and you get a, a 
report a result of your exam and then you get the certificate once if you've passed. The pass mark's quite high, so you do really need to do it properly. But it's imperative that not just you have it, but every single one of your team have it. And I would imagine that like Australia, every country would have a, a similar um, system where you can do the infectious control course. And you've even done a uh, put together a video um, uh, which would, which helps uh, salon owners and their staff get everything, all their ducks in line, haven't you? Yeah, so we've put a, a bit of a video there together just to checklist through things, things that are important to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Okay, so how long is it going to take, um, given this document, um, how long is it going to take for a, a salon or spa to get ready for when business opens with all of these ducks in a row? Um, I, I think that they will, I mean, if you're going to be really diligent with it, because um, you need to go and get these posters or stickers printed up, so you need to get them, so you need to allow at least probably five working days at your printers. You need to go do your shopping. You need to get make sure you have everything. Everything has to be in every single treatment room. Everything has to be in all your common areas, so you need to make sure. You need to get yourselves a thermometer, um, so you need to order all these things. So it's really important um, that you start now because it could, so for example, on Friday, we're going to find out um, what's going to be allowed to be open, what are the soft areas um, for soft openings. So, you know, that's why last Friday we did our cleaning because I didn't want to get caught out. So it's imperative that you start now because it could take you a couple of weeks, but you've got to train your team. You have to clean your salons. You have to have all your rooms prepped. Um, you need to do go through the process with your team so they are fully understand what is expected of them every day when they walk through that door. So there's a lot of, a lot of and I think that you'll find that your team will feel a lot more comfortable and confident about coming to work. So I don't know. I've heard with businesses that have gone back, particularly hair salons, because they chose to close down in, um, in Australia rather than being closed down. A lot of them have had a lot of problems with their team coming back to work um, because the government's given them job seeker and they seem to think it's an expensive um, doll form and that they can stay at home and will find all sorts of excuses not to come to work. So um, it's really important that you're, or if they don't feel safe, they say, well, that's great, you're opening, but I still don't feel safe about coming to work. If you have all these measures in place to make sure that they stay safe, you're going to eliminate those problems because they know you're on top of it. If you're on, not on top of it, um, then your clients, your staff are not going to feel comfortable about coming back to work. So they need to also know through your communication and through education that they're in a safe environment. So uh, once the once people download the document and, and get the video, it's a process of uh, a week or two to actually get ready for reopening, yeah? Um, yeah, absolutely. Because you've got to even like some things that you'll be ordering, you still got to get from like for WA, takes five working days plus to get something from the Eastern States. So if you're ordering, you know, sterilisation, um, gels or anything like that that's coming from somewhere else, um, your thermometers might be a little bit hard to get. So you really need to get on top of your, your lists and having everything ready to go um, and your education, I think. So first week, that's what I would be doing. And your second week, getting it, making sure that the salon was all prepared for your day open. Now, um, it's all very well getting all of these things in place, um, but somehow you've got to communicate to that, that what you've done and, and all of the rigid procedures you've put in place, you've got to communicate that to your clients and prospects. How do you do that? So um, I think you need to use all your social media platforms um, and all your communication platforms. So throughout um, our closure, we've been communicating with our clients consistently, um, which I'm sure most of you have done the same. Um, so... Facebooks and your Instagram, your emailing, SMSing, um, those kind of platforms are going to be the way that you will be able to tell your clients, hey, look, we're opening on a certain date. Here's a list of the things that we will be putting in place to keep you safe. Um, we ask 
you know, when you make your booking, if you have any special requirements from us, that you let us know because um, everybody has individual requirements. Um, so for an example, that individual requirement might be that your client is a high risk. Like I have one lady who's very high risk, her husband's got um, cancer. And so we've already put things in place that when she comes in, she will wait in the car before she comes in. And um, when her treatment's ready, we will SMS her. We will make sure that nobody is in the reception area and she will only go through with her therapist. So she will actually have no contact with anybody else except for the receptionist and the therapist during her time in the business. So those kind of things, you, but you, they aren't in your policy and procedure manual basically because that is your question to your client. What is it that you, would, um, you personally require? So that's something that you need to also remember. You need to make sure that you are individualising your service because everybody's going to have different needs um, and requirements. So it's being able to alter between what they need. So it's really important to actually communicate this through any channels you have, social media, Absolutely. email. Uh, very, SMS. very important. This is going to make or break salons. This is what's going to make and break you. If you open your door and your therapists have not changed the way you're doing anything, you're exactly the same way when you, if you were doing exactly the same thing you've always done when you closed your doors, that wasn't so great to start with. I'd be fairly disappointed um, because you already should have had things in place for that. Um, and so I was watching salons were crying because they were getting quieter and quieter and didn't know why. It's because they weren't changing. You can't keep doing what you're doing. You have to change the way you were doing things. Um, I mean, we've all, whenever we did clinic treatments, we always wore a mask anyway and we always wore gloves. That's great. But it's now you've got to communicate that with your clients and you need to make sure that you are changing. You've got to step it up. And, yes, it's a lot of work. This is a pain in the butt. The whole thing is a painful. It's, it wasn't fun. I was up like till four in the morning writing some of my manual. It's the whole thing's hard work um, to put together. Um, hence why I figured that maybe a lot of people would like it because it has been a lot of work to put together. Um, but it's just painful for everybody. It's painful. Anyone you speak to, the whole COVID-19 in some way has impacted them. There is nobody that's missed this. It's in, uh, right around the world. So we have to get past the whole, oh, God, it's going to be a lot of work and, oh, God, for me. You just need to really put that aside because you need to put your heads down, be business owners, be leaders and go, okay, this is what we need to do. This is what we're going to do to get through this. Now, some, some spas and clinics are not going to open um, after this. Um, I presume from your point of view, the ones that are going to open and, and stay open are the ones that are going to be best prepared. Um, well, I'd like to think they will be. Um, some people won't open, I don't think, purely out of not wanting to or not being prepared. I think some people are financially going to be in a different position and, I, and that's really unfortunate. You've got some salons that may have not been operating for very long, have a lot of loans, a lot of leasing equipment, um, and I feel for them because money's not falling out of the sky. So for some people, it's not going to be easy. This is going to go on for six, you know, we're all, we're all getting a bit of a helping hand for six months and we need to use this six months to build up back our cash flow um, so that we can survive. So it's really important that we're getting those clients back through the door. We can't have this attitude, oh, well, I'm right, because for six months, if I don't have many clients, the wages are being paid for. Because that will see the death of you. It's got to be those six months, we've got to pump, we've got to make some serious money, get that cash flow in. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by making sure that your clients feel confident and comfortable in coming into your spa. And the only way to do that is have to have good policies and procedures. You shouldn't have to worry about the money because if the clients feel comfortable and confident in your ability as a business, then they will come and they will tell their friends to come because you're doing this where their salon is not. Okay, so um, I'm going to... Um 
just open up the uh, the webinar to questions um, shortly. If you want to ask uh, Karen any questions, you'll have to unmute yourself, uh, put your hand up, wave, jump up and down. Uh, but just before that, uh, I want to show you what you're going to get in your email. I'm going to send you an email shortly. It looks like this. Um, you can order Karen's entire um, uh, process, manual, uh, policies and procedures system for COVID-19. Um, it looks like this. This is the document that you'll be able to download. Uh, when you get that email, it'll take you through to, the link in it will take you through to an order form that looks like this. It's 97 US dollars for the first 20 to order it. After that, it's going up to the uh, standard, revert to the standard price of 147. Um, when you order, you, it'll take you to a page that looks like this. Uh, you can download the, the complete 35 page manual here, uh, and you can watch uh, and download Karen's training video uh, here you can stream it on YouTube. You can um, get your staff to watch it. Um, you can play it many times. And of course, the document itself is the template for you to prepare for uh, your reopening uh, being COVID-19 ready. If anyone would like to um, ask a question, um, would you like to put your hand up or unmute yourself um, and shout out uh, so that we can uh, take any questions and Karen can answer them. Anyone have any questions of Karen? Yeah. Yep, go for it, Rita. Um, is this going to be forever? The what, that, what, the procedure? Yes. Um, it'll all depend upon what happens in the world, I guess. I would like to answer that and I don't think I can. Uh, yeah. But I think it's going to be in place for a very long time. Mm. Um, I think that it's going to take um, clients' focus. And from what, what I experienced with that Facebook post that I did with the disinfecting, um, see if I could bring it up for you to show you, um, it literally had big disinfecting sign across it and the salon, a photo at the front of the salon and said, today the girls are like, you know, you could smell the bleach out the front of my business apparently. Um, there was that much going on. But... I think that we just need to understand that we just have to succumb to it and stop fighting it. Um, it could be a long time. We just don't know. I mean, people are going to be very weary now. Um, I think that salons that were running around not following good procedure to start with, which unfortunately is the case, are going to be quiet. So I'll give you an example. We have a hair salon as well. My husband owns a hair salon not connected to my business at all and so he was obviously open he stayed open he never closed his doors now for a few weeks um which was probably the crunch for a lot of salons when they went oh we're not getting busy we're just going to shut down it'll be easier um he stayed open and rode that now during that time we put a lot of procedures in place in his business um we culled the girls to only certain days so there was only so much staff in there they all wore masks they, every station had disinfectant on it, it had wipes on it, had everything to disinfect all the equipment, everything between every single client. Seating arrangements were changed in the business. Posters were put up. Um, there was no more normal cups and glasses anymore. It was all um, throwaway items. So he really had to change it. I can tell you now his business has been like Christmas week every week since those two weeks that it was quiet. When people were being told to stay at home, he was still flat out. And a lot of the people that were coming in were old people who were happy with what he was doing. Mm. He had people who had cancer come in for haircuts. Um, obviously not having chemo, but they were unwell. Um, and their wives would come in and say, what's the procedure if I bring my husband in? Or what's the procedure for my wife? So they were actually coming in and saying, what is the procedure? that you are doing to keep my wife safe or my husband safe. So people were flooding through. He was really having a hard time trying to, um, and it was quite hard to watch turn away clients because you cannot over, go over the number of people you can have in that business. You need to sustain the right, the right system. Um, in a hair salon, they're extremely visible. 
everything those girls did, even speaking to each other, they needed to maintain all day a one, one and a half metre distance. All day. At all times. You couldn't see two clients out at the front desk at the same time. So you need you need to change their way their girls are thinking. But that's up to us to change that. Does that answer your question? But yeah, but um, if you have to have that one and a half metre distance all the time, what about when you're giving a client a facial and a massage? Well, that's different. The client knows that you're not going to be able to do that, right? And when the government opens us, they know that we can't do that. And when they're cutting hair, they can't do that. Yeah. But you have to, at all other times, you need to obey by the rules. Mm. So with like what we were doing when we were still open and um, COVID was first around, like we were sterilising everything, um, everything got changed on the bed, it, like facial um, uh, towels were disposable, the face hole covers were disposable, hand um, sterilisers at every tap. Is it going to be much different to that? And, and we're not using paper cups, so we'll have to get rid of all our teacups. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot of difference. The difference is you need to have it written down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's it's what not good policies. enough. Because yeah. if I come into your business and your therapist doesn't do it the way you're saying, because you're the owner, so you're going to do it. But I, we all know what staff are like. They might all do this for a week. Yeah. But that's about it. And then they'll start to forget little things. And they don't need to. They just need to. So... If it's not written down, they don't have it in front of them, they can't refer to it, what's your reception protocol? What do you use your protocol when the client's walking in the door? What's your protocol after the client's treatment? What's your protocol when the client walks into the treatment room? There's so many things. Where are your posters? What are you putting up? What are you telling them? How are you communicating what they're supposed to do? How are you communicating with the client what they're supposed to do? Some people actually do not care. So some people will come into my husband's hair salon and he'll say to them, oh, they've come in to get Johnny's haircut and his sister walks in and his mother walks in and that he'd have to say, oh, would you mind, even though they're signs, would you mind standing outside um, because we can only have your son in here for his haircut? Some people would look at him like he was a complete asshole. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody cares. So if you're not communicating that through your business with your clients, you're going to have a problem. So it's not just put a mask on. I mean, you should have already been sanitising your equipment. You should already be disposing. Your, your linen does not need to be disposable. You just need to treat your linen in the correct manner. You don't need to add that expense. But you need to make sure that you are treating the linen in the right way. So if it goes off, if it goes off to, um, we hire our linen from a laundry supplier, but I'm sure they would use boiling water. So, yep. yeah, I'd have to speak to them about what's happening there. They supply hotels and day yeah. spas. And they will have systems in place. Yeah. Uh, for what they're doing with your towels. Um, yeah. I'm sure, because they also can be fined for not following the right protocols. Yeah. And they won't have, they are not in that laundry, they're not going to their staff, oh, by the way, make sure that you wash your hands before you touch linen. They have a full-on proper protocol written down saying, this is what you need to be doing. Mm -hmm. They make them accountable for this is what needs to be doing. Um, yeah, we need, it's really important. For some reason, salons don't understand the importance of having your policies written down. You will forever repeat yourselves over and over and over again if you don't educate and have it accessible to your team all the time and that there are things around to remind them all the time. Can I just so jump in there? I think it's, week, they'll be useless. I just wanted to jump in there, Rita. Um, I think it's really important that that your team signs off, reads and signs off on on uh, on the policies and procedures that Karen has put so much effort into detailing here. There are parts of this document where they they can actually sign off and say, "I have read this," and they can always go back to the to the manual. If there's any doubt, it, that's why it's so important to have things written down. Would you agree, Karen? Absolutely. I everything's written in my salon. Uh, everything, absolutely everything. I just the way we live in a world that's completely different. If you don't have contracts, um, 
just even the smallest thing um, can get you into lots of trouble these days. Staff will find if something happens to one of your staff and they can prove that they catch it in your business, You're I reckon trouble. we're going to be liable, girls. This is a whole new world. This is a whole new world. And, you know, how, workers' comp's a great work life. <laughs> right? So if someone can get a payout, they will. Um, you need to cover yourselves as well. It's really important that we protect our own um, our own businesses. Um, Karen, question yeah. from uh, Vivian in Tasmania: Can oh. the can the um, uh, the manual be modified to suit uh, their own businesses? Well, the thing with the manual is that what are you going to modify? You have to disinfect things. You have to do certain things. Um, that is necessary in a normal in the normal policy and procedure manual that I have. Yes, because you're putting your own personality to it. Let's just say, right? How you would like your bed made, or how you would like your staff to greet a client. You can do that, but with this, this is more your protocols of how something should be done to keep your clients safe in a hygienic environment. Now, my name is on that. Um, there is a disclaimer on that because it is a health um, document rather than a fluffy let's make the clients feel nice procedure manual. No, you cannot change it. However, you could always um, retype it and add things to it if you wanted to. That's not a problem. But from a legality point of view, uh, my lawyer has told me no. Thanks, Karen. Any other questions of uh, Karen if you'd like to... Uh, unmute the yourself. Cheryl had something before that she wanted to ask. So who was that, Karen? Cheryl. Cheryl? Yep. Uh, unmute yourself. Oh, there you go, Cheryl. Um, I just wanted to ask, have you got the link for the course? It's it's in your inbox now, Cheryl. Oh, okay, thank you. And in fact, that email went out 10, 10 minutes ago. If you check your okay. inbox or your spam folder, it may have gone into there. Yeah. Um, you'll find that it uh, has the link to uh, that order form that uh, you'll see uh, when you follow that link that looks like that. Um, and look, if you want to uh, put hours and days and weeks into producing this yourself, um, uh, I'm sure. No, uh, sorry. Um, what I meant was the course that you needed to do to return to work. I'm sorry. To that. Oh, on the um, for your um, at the health department. Yeah. So if you have a look, if Greg puts back that certificate for you. Let me have a look. Hang on. The Department of Health. Yep. So you just Google Department of Health. Okay. Um, for your infectious control training. Yeah. And it will come up for you. Okay. It's, it's, it, is, um, it is one that all your nurses have done that are working in the hospitals. They, this was their... Um, this was what they were expected to do right at the beginning as well. So um, I think when you need to share that certificate, when your staff have that, you need to display that in their treatment rooms. They need to be up. You need to, you need to get past, you know, you never told clients, oh, this is what we do before you come or this is how we treat your linen. This is what we do in the treatment room when you leave. You're not used to telling them all those things. You need to get used to telling them what you're doing. You need to be as transparent with your clients as possible. And if you're not, you have something to hide as far as they're concerned. There is nowhere to hide in this. Um, it is really, truly, I, I believe that we shouldn't need to worry about money when we open our businesses. We need to just worry about looking after our clients and our teams and making sure that everyone is as safe as possible and if you're following all those protocols and something does happen, you're going to be okay because you have followed all the things that you have possibly in, have put in place. You've done all the right things in the legality. If you can't produce do, this is what my team does every morning. This is what we do every afternoon. If you can't produce any paperwork, if you can't produce proof of it being done every day, you haven't got a leg to stand up. You can't say, oh, but I told my girls we do this and we have to do that and they're going to go, that's really great. Good on you. 
you know, it's a bit like, you know, the smallest things, this has got nothing to do with what we're doing, but a lot of owners have been caught out like this, including myself. When you have a team member who's pregnant and goes off on her little uh, maternity leave, or it hasn't really gone on maternity leave, goes, oh, I'm leaving, I'm not really sure if I want to come back, don't know when I'll come back, and you go, no problem, that's fine, just leave me a call when you want to come back or if you want to come back. And then they call you and say, oh, look, you know, I was thinking about coming back. And you go, okay, no problem. Now, you never got that in paper, in writing. And guess what? When she gets to 10 years or seven years, she, you owe her pro rata. And you're like, no, she wasn't on maternity leave. She just rang me when she was ready. Yeah, no, sorry. Where's the paperwork saying she'd quit? Right? If you don't, that was my big lesson and everything gets written down. So I had to pull seven grand out of my pocket because I didn't get one letter. Now, at the end of that, when she got her money, she turned around and I had actually rung her and said, do you want to come back? She wrote back to me and said, which was the proof in the pudding at the end of the day, because I rang and said, oh, do you want to come back to it? And she said, you begged me to come back. So she knew, but she also knew that I needed that letter of proof. So without paperwork, ladies, you have nothing has to all be written down. You have to have signed paper work. You have to, you have to follow. There is no cutting corners. There, the, the difference between being a beauty therapist and a business owner is unfortunately that. Okay, so another quick question from um, uh, Leanne Bridger. Uh, Leanne hmm. asks, will liability insurance uh, no. change? Well, that'll be a up to your individual insurance companies that you deal with i guess that question is for them and that will all obviously depend on your um insurance company and i'm assuming that if you go for that your premiums will go up with that so that's not unfortunately i can't answer that one um 100 but i will imagine that if that is included in there we will see an increase in our in our premiums. So it's the survivors of this that will reap the benefits, not the ones who sit on their hands, Karen. Yep. If you put your head in the sand and go, this is just too hard, I'm just going to do what I always did, you may find a lot more time on your hands. <laughs> okay, we've got time for one more question. Uh, anyone like to ask a question of Karen before we, uh, we close out? All good? Okay. Thanks very much. Hi, Effie in, in Hobart. <laughs> Petra, Leanne, thank you for attending. Um, the email with the link should be now in your inbox. So if you want to grab that, uh, uh, that COVID-19 uh, preparation manual for your own salon, um, grab it now. Uh, it's 97 US. It goes up to 147 after the first 20 Um and uh, anyone have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, call me uh, at Worldwide Solar Marketing and uh, I'll put you right. Karen, um, thank you, Karen, for... Sure. I'm extremely passionate about it and procedures and getting everyone to do what I want, so... <laughs> you are passionate about it. There's no doubt about that. So I wish you all the best. I hope all your businesses do really well and all the clients come running back through your doors. Great. Thank you all. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Good luck, everyone. See you.